Travel through the Amazon, and you'll often hear the indigenous saying, a forest has no end and no beginning, to explain the natural cycle of disturbance and recovery that often occurs in tropical forests. The indigenous experience of forest recovery has been based on decades of slash and burn cultivation, from which forests were able to recover well in general. But does the saying hold true for forests abandoned after more intense land uses, such as gold mining? In recent years, gold mining has rapidly increased across the Amazon, especially along the Guyana Shield, where it is responsible for as much as 90% of total deforestation. These forests hold roughly 20 billion tons of above ground carbon in its trees. Much of the forest lost stems from artisanal and small scale miners who respond quickly to increases in international gold prices, leaving in their wake widespread environmental damage such as deforestation, extensive soil erosion and mercury contamination of rivers and streams. Previous studies looked at how forests regrew after being cut down and converted into agriculture and pasture, and then abandoned. They found these recovering secondary forests were able to host a range of ecosystem services, including the ability to maintain biodiversity and accumulate carbon. Yet none of these studies looked at how forest recovering from gold mining compares with recovery from more traditional land uses, such as pasture and agriculture. For our research, we traveled to two central gold mining areas in Guyana, where we established tree measurement plots in abandoned gold mining sites in 2016, and we measured them 18 months later in 2017. We ensured that measurements were taken from the three different mining zones that often exist in any mining site. The overburden, these are areas where topsoil is deposited during the mining process. The tailing pond, deposits of material left over after the gold has been separated from the ore, and the mining pit. In this particular study, we were interested on the impact of the mining on the forest itself. We were specifically interested in evaluating the ability of forests in Guyana to recover from past mining. Our research found that gold mining significantly limits the regrowth of Amazonian forests, greatly reducing their ability to accumulate carbon. Recovery rates on abandoned mining pits and tailing ponds were amongst the lowest ever recorded for tropical forests. At some sites, we recorded no woody tree regrowth even after three to four years since mining has stopped. If you extrapolate that across the Amazon, it means that gold mining results in an annual loss of about 2 million tons of forest carbon, which may not be recovered through natural regeneration. On the overburden area, however, we did find recovery. And we found that this recovery occurred at a similar rate as what might be considered a normal recovery rate um, in other parts of the Amazon from, from other land uses, such as agriculture and pasture. The recovery process is mainly driven by the availability of nitrogen, a critical nutrient the trees use in order to recover and not the presence of mercury, as many had assumed. Nitrogen was significantly lacking in the mining pits and tailing ponds, making it difficult for them to re-establish after mining. We also observed that active mining sites had on average 250 times more mercury than abandoned sites, indicating that most of this mercury leaches into neighboring forests and rivers. Mercury pollution is especially harmful to aquatic food sources which is an integral part of local and indigenous communities' diets. So what does all of this mean then going forward and how do we apply this information? Well, our results suggest that on their own, um, forests are not really able to recover naturally post-mining, at least in what would be normal timescales of recovery. And the active restoration measures are likely needed here. Given the importance of nutrients in this process, one thing to contemplate might be actually backfilling um, mining pits with excavated soils. Um, given the, the overall increase in mining pressure in the Amazon, um, we do really need now to think about large-scale remediation measures. But time might be against us. The current COVID-19 pandemic is driving an economic crisis which significantly increases the demand for gold, given its perceived role as an economic stabilizer. Current gold price is more than $1,700 US dollars per ounce, 
and estimated to reach about 2,000 to 3,000 in the coming months. Many small-scale miners are already rapidly responding to this increase in pricing. Added to this is the weakening of environmental laws and reducing funding of environmental agencies, as we've seen in Brazil and Venezuela. All of this just means more deforestation in the Amazon. Now we start to learn about trees. Mm -hmm. Today I got to show you the flowers. This tree bears this flowers. Mm -hmm. So when you see the flowers, you might say, look, look, look the flower there now, because you know it's such a water the tree. Yeah. Look the one there. You don't know this one. You're going to say, oh, oh there's a common man. Yeah. But well, you know other flowers, and so you're going to say, oh, there's a... But certain flower you can't see, mm -hmm. like Kabakali, you never see the flower because Come the flower is small. Yeah. Ah. You can't see it from the ground because it's not big out there. Like it's a very tiny flower. Okay, okay. And even so when it bears the fruit, the fruit does it big like a black pepper seed. Uh -huh. Within this seed, when it's ripe, it got nine small seeds. Okay, okay. And all birds like it because it's sweet. That's why you see any new place that open, mm. what is Kabakali? Kabakali. Bloodwood. But carbocali must be in the mix of one carbocali.